In this video, I'd like to talk about modeling with component bodies. I have a T-section here, and I have to put a rather complex cutout in each end. Let's take a look at the cutout. Notice that we, this is a positive of the cutout. The bore, the step for the threads, and then a, a chamfer on the outside. And this is saved out as a component, as you can see right there. So I can use this over and over for many uh, operations. To use this, I simply insert it into my assembly. Then I'll move it out to some location and say OK. Now notice it's linked because it was the external file. I'll break that link. I find a quick way to copy using the pattern command. So I'll pattern the component and I'll just pattern me three of them to get three copies real quick. They are exact identical copies. They're not paste new. They're just paste or identical. So now all I have to do is take that component and align it in position. The first one's real simple, point to point. Say OK. Now the next one, I'm going to repeat command pick on the point and pick on the other end point. There it is. You can see that it's backwards. Just flip it. And that one's done too. The last one, I simply do it again. Repeat command. And this time I've got to align it to a face first. So do not pick the center. Pick the face. And it aligns. I need to flip it. And then I will do it again one more time to put it in position with the point. The next step is to re use the combine command to remove the bodies of the components from the master. So go to combine, capture your position because you do not want to lose your alignment. Pick on the master, which is the T, and then set it to cut. Then pick on all the bodies of the plugs. Now here's where you need to make a decision. If you want to edit them in this local file, not the external one, you need to keep the tool. I do not. If I wanted to edit it, I would go outside and use the original. But I'm, so I'm not going to check keep tools. If you did, it would leave the body here and you could actually edit it from the timeline. So I say OK and I have my cutouts, as you can see. To finish off this T very quickly, since you have your combines all done, it go to extrude. Pick on the face, change your direction and say all for the whole through. And then for the other one, you simply go to the other one and pick on extrude, pick on the face and go to object, which will be the center hole and you're all done. So you have a complete fitting with threads, chamfer and everything very quickly using a component body for modeling. Another good example of modeling with component bodies is the placing of wood screw pilot holes and countersinks in a board. We all know that the hole tool does not contain uh, drill holes for wood screws, so this is a great application. So first you go ahead and simply model a solid body and save it out for a number. I did a number 10 wood screw counterbore or countersink and pilot hole. Okay, I then go ahead and place that component into my model. I'm going to move it to the corner for right now and place the first one. So I'm going to move by point and I'm going to hover and pick the edge, which will pick the center, and then go up to the corner. I then will hit the move or translate icon and go one inch, uh, one inch over and three quarters of an inch down. So it's placed automatically. I also then break the link. And at this point you can make a decision. So the decision you have to make is whether you want to do just like the other one and pattern the component and then combine all of them 
or you can combine the one and then pattern the faces of the created hole. That's up to you. I'll use a second method. I'll go to combine, pick on the master, and then the body and be cut. I'm not going to keep the tool and say OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the wood screw body that I brought in earlier. Remember, do not delete. Next thing to pattern this, you must use faces because that's all that's left. So I pick on the faces, two faces. Then my direction, and I'm just going to pattern it. I'm going to go this way, a total distance of three at six. And the other way, I'm going to do two at minus 40, no, 45, excuse me. So I have my holes. So that's that's how quick it is to place screw holes into a plate. Let's just see how it worked out. I got a screw over here. I'm going to go ahead and put it in place and take a look at it. I'm going to use the center of it with a rigid joint to the center of this. Take a look at it with a section view and as you can see it's a nice fit. So that's a quick quick use of component bodies to make a wood screw pilot hole. So what if you have random screw holes? Basic is the same process as our pipe T. So we go in here and we make a sketch on this face and put your points wherever you need the screw holes. So I'll just do a point at four random locations. One, two, three, and four finish my sketch. And next thing I'll do, I'll bring in my pilot hole model, which contains the solid body. I'm going to move it out so I can get duplicates and say OK. Next thing, I want to break the link. Again, I feel like copying is easier with the pattern command, but it's totally up to you. I want four of them. So I'll just drag it out for four. These are identical copies. Next thing I'll use, the same as before, I'll use the align command and pick on the top of each screw to the point. Repeat the command and do it three more times. And of course, the last thing is to go to Combine, Capture Position. You don't want them to move after you align them. And then you want to pick your base and you want to pick all your bodies. You can use a window. I'm just going to pick all four. Cut and I'm not going to keep the bodies. So I have my holes. Then I turn off the sketch. And I'm all done. If you would like to, you can highlight all the components in the browser and right click and remove. Do not delete and you have get rid of them. I hope you enjoyed this method of modeling using component bodies. Hope it will help you increase your productivity in Fusion 360.